Welcome to the Facts vs. Feelings podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Dietrich, and I'm joined by my co-host, Sonu Varghese. Cutting through the noise in 30 minutes each week with Ryan Dietrich, Chief Market Strategist, and Sonu Varghese, VP Global Macro Strategist, taking out the boring and helping investors focus on what really matters. A quick note before we start the show. Investment advisory services offered through CWM LLC, an SEC registered investment advisor. Carson Partners, the division of CWM LLC, is a nationwide partnership of advisors. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the latest edition of Carson's Facts versus Feelings with Ryan and Sonu. This one's episode 70, Sonu. We're just talking, we're almost wow. to 75 here, getting somewhere. Uh, we're calling this one Unpacking a Mega Week. And this is brought to you by our friends at Y Charts. So, no, just before we literally hit record two minutes ago on the YouTube channel, you can see this. The joke is you had those bull horns behind you for the longest time. And now we're making all time highs, and you apparently have lost your <laughs> bull horns. I, I, I don't even know what that means. It. Somebody's <laughs> stolen it. Maybe it's a kid or something. Or maybe it's one of those. Bulls, bears on Wall Street that came home and stole it from my desk. I don't know where it is. Uh, it's one of those yield curve M2 bears. They they can't <laughs> stand how you've been uh, you've been so right on what's going on Wait. here, and they <laughs> they stole your horns. That's terrible. No, hopefully. Harry. Hopefully your horns turn up. Although I think I bought those on eBay, not eBay, wrong thing, on Amazon. Amazon? And we used them. Okay. Yeah, I think when we had Tom Lee on back in the summer, yes. we wore bull horns, if people remember that one. We actually asked Tom to wear the horns. He said, I'm not wearing those. So we, <laughs> although, Tom's, Tom's in a very good bull as well, but he wouldn't wear the horns like we did. Maybe we just have to re, uh, reorder those, order those for you. All right, so let's get into it. So All there's right. a ton of stuff. Last week was a huge week. This week's a very big week. Again, we're going to unpack all of it here in episode 70. We've got a rough script but if you've listened to this podcast long enough you know these scripts are uh <laughs> they're just suggestions who knows what we're going to talk about we're going to talk about how the stock market continues to make new highs been really strong we've got the fed coming up do a little fed preview jobs are coming up do a little jobs preview along with kind of a macro uh review of last week really strong data specifically that gdp and then maybe even talk about earnings a little bit as well all right so new so first things first where do you want to start um just the market right. in general, making new yeah, highs? What do you want to talk about? Market. How? Yeah. I, I know you're not surprised that the market's making new highs. And it's, yeah. you know, it's, it's just been a matter of time, right? But how positive is that? Mm -hmm. The fact that we, because you get a lot of questions. Oh, my God, the market's new highs. Is this a time to sell, right? How yeah. much higher can it go, right? Right. So uh, how positive is that? Yeah, I mean, I will say I'm a little surprised. So the time we're recording this, what is today's date? The 30th. So we're recording this on Tuesday, exactly three months ago today in terms of market days. That's 63 trading days. That's exactly three months ago was October 27th, the low of that vicious, vicious bear market. So no, the past three months, S&P is up over 19. 15%. That's what you're getting at. People are like, wow, that's a big move. Yeah. And it absolutely is a big news. I was just crunching these numbers literally before we started here. I went back in history and I found 18 other times the market was up more than 19% in three months. Now, believe me, some of these times are up way more than 19%, but at least 19%. Here's what I think matters to the listeners, the investors, people wondering, you know, should I just get out right here with the market at all time mm -hmm. highs and up a lot? I'd say no. At least consider this before you make that decision. <laughs> One year later, higher 15 out of 18, but up a median of over 16% on average, or six, a median of 16%, and an average of oh, about 13.5%. One year after. After you have this incredible three month surge, I got other numbers and stats and figures. I think that's one of the, that's a timely one. And last week, check out last week's podcast. We did talk about kind of when you're making new highs. Normally, you make more new highs, and the market actually tends to have stronger performance when you're making new highs. Yes, eventually we'll have an all time high that is it, that ends it. But as we're going to talk about with the economy and the Fed and inflation and all this stuff, we think these new highs are here to stay. I mean, so do what, um, what what do you think could upset this though? What could upset? I mean, we're still bullish, you know. I mean, I'll be, I'll say yeah. my answer real quick. February is not all that great, especially in an election right. year. So maybe after a big rally, it's perfectly normal to take a break. Let's be very very clear. Also, the first quarter of a, an election mm -hmm. year is usually not all that great. Off to a pretty darn good start. Let's be clear. But those are just some things. Maybe it's just time for a break. Is kind of where I think could upset it. I'm not even saying upset the apple cart. Just that's normal. But what could really knock us off? You think this bullish trajectory that we've been on for well three months and Honestly, maybe even, you know, well, yeah, we'll just say the last three months. You think about but there's always something I, like, you know, looking at things from a macro perspective, like my official title is, 
I blanked out. Global macro strategist. Yes, that's, that's yes. part of it, right? Uh, with a, yes. As a global macro strategist, you're always seeing some risk on the other. There's something mm-hmm. going on in the Red Sea. There's something going on in the Middle East. But yeah. actually, usually the risks are more you know, salient, closer to home. I would say, mm-hmm. right? And you think about the last few times, right? When did the Apple card get upset? You yeah. rewind all the way back to 2017 was a very good year for markets. And then you got 2018, 2019. We got like, there was a little kerfuffle in the, you know, fixed income markets and then the trade war and then, yep. you know, policy things, right? I hate to think everything comes back to policy, but there is an aspect of that. And then 2019 was actually a very good year. Mm-hmm. The Fed was lowering rates. I mean, you know, it gets back to something you pointed out to our partners this week that, you know, there can be rate cuts that's just normalization as opposed to rate cuts due to the Fed panicking or in the middle of a recession, right? So Mm. that's, you know, normalization is good. And then COVID happened. That was another time, goodness, the Apple card really got upset and then things rallied. And then 2022, right? 2021 was a great year for markets. What upset the Apple card? It was a Fed. Is back mm-hmm. to policy, right? And and then so what I think could upset the Apple card if the Fed really pushes back against it. Like, what's the narrative yeah. now? The narrative now is, you know, inflation's down, the economy is hot, mm-hmm. so the Fed's going to cut, right? Because inflation's much low. We'll talk about it, but inflation's running below the target. If you look at the last three or six months, right, right? it's running below two percent. So why do rates need to be five and a half percent? So the market's saying, you know what? They're going to bring it down to maybe four percent by the end of the year. If the Fed really pushes back against that, they have, we have a Fed meeting today. They're meeting as we speak today and tomorrow, right. Right? right? Tuesday, Wednesday of this week. If they start pushing back against that narrative, I think that's going to create some volatility, right? In markets, that could possibly upset the Apple card. The Fed being more restrictive than they have to be. I, I think that's a big risk here in my mind. Yeah, absolutely. We'll, we'll dive more into the Fed here, uh, kind of the next discussion. And I do want to really get into the whole idea of, you know, there are different types of rate cuts. We'll, we'll get into that soon. Um, just some other things to think about here. So, you know, we'll see, but it's looking like we're going to close higher in January. So let's just assume we're going to close higher in January, the time we're recording this and nicely actually higher crossed. potentially. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fingers crossed. I'm crossing my toes as well here. I'm even yeah, crossing. I can't cross much else. I'm, I'm getting older. I'll just I'll stick I, with fingers I, and toes. I, I'm literally yeah. trying to cross my toes as you speak. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny i don't i don't have shoes on believe me i i i, I just looked down i am wearing pants i just looked down you never okay. know i mean uh, I, I usually wear pants yeah, i usually wear pants but hey you know it's a, it's a new world all you see is the, the shirt up um so anyway when you're higher in january so goes january goes the year people like to talk about these things we talked about on this very podcast last year when the s&p gained over six percent last january how that's astronomically bullish especially when you're negative the year before talked about it a year ago higher five out of five times up like 27 percent on average for the full year when january is up more than five percent and the previous year is negative so i'm not saying you know this always works i'm just saying i would ignore it so sony here's what the listeners need to know when you're positive in january the next 11 months so goes january goes the year next 11 months higher 12 percent on average up 86 percent of the time when january is lower which again is ho- hopefully not going to happen this year the rest of the year, that's the next 11 months, up only 2% on average, higher 60% of the time. Just for context, your average year gains about 8% the final 11 months and is higher about three out of four times. So again, it's just one way to look at it, yes, but I would say it's not bad. The other way to look at this, we talked a lot about the Santa Claus rally in the first five days of the year. Both of those were indeed negative. Last year, we had Santa Claus up, the first five days up, and January. If that's a trifecta. I don't recall the numbers off the top of my head, but they were very, very bullish, and we pointed them out right. a year ago. So now we've got Santa Claus down, first five days down, but likely January higher. Only happened three other times. Small sample size, fully aware, but I'm still going to point it out. 85, 91, and 93. The full years back then, up 26%, 26%, 7%, up about 20% on average those three times. My, to put a bow on this, yes, we wanted Santa Claus to come to town the first five days after a 14 percent rally the last two months of the year last year i think it was just some seasonal well-deserved maybe well-deserved break during that time frame that's normally bullish but now we're back to the grind back to where we should be with the with the january that's higher to me january higher matters more than those others these are just some things to think about there's a lot of other things to think about but this is a, still a um, feather in the cap of the bowl to have a higher january sony you want to add anything to that i was going to ask you how worried were you or did you, like, mm-hmm. I'll put it this way, how, how many butterflies 
crept crept up into your stomach when you saw Santa Claus rally negative first five days negative. Yeah, well, two. Uh, I think it was four butterflies. I have no okay. idea. I, mean, I don't know how to quantify that. Yeah, I mean, it was a little. <laughs> it's funny. It was a little, 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 little worrisome. But then again, you just look at it. We we're so overbought, so overextended. Right. Yes, those times right. are normally bullish. But there was just a lot of other things that we talked about it on this podcast. Again, Russell two thousand up twenty two percent. Small caps up twenty two percent the last two months. That's a huge move. But historically, the next 12 months after that, you get even better returns. I think it's like 17% or so average a year later, stronger than average returns. So it just made sense. And then layer on the fact that early in election years tend to be a little weak. Early in a year when you get after you gain 20% tend to be a little weak-ish. That's kind of, you know, honestly, we're a little stronger this year. You can say small and mid-caps have, mm-hmm. have, have lagged is the word I'm going to use. Um, but nonetheless, I was a, a, we'll give a four butterflies worries. That's four, okay. uh, ten, ten's the most. Ten's Which the most worry. Ten's the most. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Actually, Actually, I don't. I don't really worry. We were talking. I was talking to my wife. They were talking about like you know the idea of getting nervous and 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 being anxious, being anxious. And I said I'm like never anxious. But according to my wife, I'm actually anxious. But I I I go through it other ways. I'm always moving. I'm always doing something. I'm always looking to do something. I don't like to sit around. I don't. I, the idea of staying home all day drives me crazy. So I guess I am anxious in other ways. I always want to go do something or create mm. something. Um, but okay. but uh, if, if, as a guy who has a camera in front of him, yeah, a guy who has a camera in front of him all day long i'm not nervous doing this stuff or going on tv that's like that's like second nature but i guess i'm nervous the idea of sitting around or anxious the idea of sitting around anxious. i don't know going all over the place now sonu um let's see let's do a couple more minutes on the market being so strong um you know what else what else is there what what else do you think is a reason to be bullish from a market's point of view here i think uh you know two things let's look at the positive and negative uh usually and, and i think i picked this up from you if Defensive stocks are doing well. That yeah. would be another area. I imagine going back to the, maybe you should stick with that butterfly metaphor. I, I'm full of metaphors today. I have another whole <laughs> metaphor of, for landings coming up, but there we'll talk go. about that later. Yes. But yeah, no. But if defensives do well, if staples, utilities, that, that grab bag of defensive stocks do well, I imagine that's a little worrying. So that's on the negative mm-hmm. side. Positive side, financials, right? One of the most mm-hmm. cyclical parts of the economy are financials, yeah. right? Uh, the entire economy runs on, you know, bank lending and all of that. So if those companies aren't doing well, you think, okay, you know, that's not great for the economy. And financials, right. I think, starting off the year strong, I think, is a big positive. Well, no, totally, totally agree. We've had some decent earnings. We'll talk more about earnings. But mm-hmm. so far, earnings are early. By the time you listen to this podcast, some of the very big names will have reported. But banks and financials tend to report early, and it's been solid. Oh, uh, Berkshire Hathaway, right, the largest yep. financial company. I get it. You could argue, much like, what is Amazon? I mean, Amazon's everything. You, Amazon does everything <laughs> anymore. So does Apple. So these companies, it's hard to put them in one area. But listen. Berkshire is the largest component of the XLF, which is financials. It's making like all-time highs as we speak. So yeah. to see those large components um, leading is perfectly, perfectly normal, at least for a bull market. You know, I think I might have one more thing I wanted there's to no, point there's out. There's no putting down the good person from Omaha, uh, Ron Carson. No, and That's, Warren well, Buffett. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah, Warren Buffett and Ron uh, from, from <laughs> Omaha, for sure there. Um so what I, I might have mentioned this last week, maybe not, but I'm going to do it again. Um, one final just thing to think about here. So we had a bear market, 25.5% bear market, which as you remember when we talked about that back in October of 2022, your average bear market without a recession, 24%. Right. It's those recessionary bear markets. Wow. Things get worse. We talked back then. There's no recession coming. We, we were on record as saying that, although everyone thought we were crazy. And sure enough, that's where the market bottomed that October. We finally made new highs, as we know. So new. I went back and found, let's see here, 10 times at a bear market that eventually made new all time highs. What happened okay. next? By the way, the average bear market is 35 percent. The average bear market out of the last 10 is 35 percent. Um, this one took 15 months to recover those losses. The average bear market to recover the losses is 24 months. Not a shock because some of those took years and years and years because they're down like 50%. This one wasn't down as much. It didn't take quite as long to recover. But a year after you make new highs after a bear market, higher nine out of 10 times for the S&P, up 10.4% on average at low double digit return, kind of the the range we think uh, things could be when all is said and done. Maybe a little bit above that's our range, but nonetheless, that's ballpark where we are. Only 07 and 08 was the market lower 
um, after that. Remember, we we hit new highs in 07 for like right. a minute, and then the in bottom October, fell out. Yeah. Yeah, yep. yeah, but again, we don't think we're in that type of scenario. So there's some, I think, important, important things to think about um, why this bull market, and we're going to talk about the macro view right now, why this bull market's alive and well. Uh, a couple things we want to talk about, so I know we're going to change gears. Does it rain a lot in Chicago? Because in Cincinnati, it literally rains every day. I don't remember a January like this. This is this is crazy. I mean, I don't. Is it raining a lot up there? What's it like? like? You know, did they move Cincinnati to England or something? Uh, but no, I don't it's, know. It's been very gray here. It's been gray in Chicago. Yeah. Like it's a double edged sword, right? In the winter, especially if it's warmer, and today it's like forty degrees or something, so it's relatively yeah. warmer. Uh, then it's great. Whereas if it's sunny, it's like 15 degrees. <laughs> it's freezing. It's so cold. Yeah. It's like, well, a couple of weeks ago, it was like negative 25. So I guess oh, everything's yeah. better than that. Well, I had you do a video outside. Uh, on, right, on, yeah. on, uh, we did a video, I hot and cold. Out. Yeah, 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 exactly. yeah you, you you were so numb because I was in California and this is a great oh. friend day. And I said, this will be funny. We'll do something about hot and cold. I'll be in California. It's like 60, but hey, that was hot for the rest of the country. And you were literally negative degrees doing a video. And I thought about lying to you and said, ah, it didn't take and have you redo it just so you'd really be cold and miserable. Oh. But Even I didn't if I wanted that. to, I don't think I could have. Yeah, I know. That's um, <laughs> that's that one. That's that's true. I, I, we've had some people reach out about Mabel, my dog, who was spayed last week. Doing? Thank you so so. Oh my goodness, Sona, you wouldn't this dog. So they said keep her calm for two weeks. Her surgery was literally a week ago. Right now, she's doing okay. fine. Is a short answer, but she she's a puppy, and I, I mean we spayed her, and she's a puppy still, and There's she's no crazy. Keeping her so, calm. so now that she's kind of getting back on the the swing of things, she is crazy, and we're like oh. keeping her calm. It's it's nuts. We're giving her the drugs. Or they're saying give her the medicine. We think all it's doing is like. I hope I can say it. it's like making it almost like making her high. She's not, she's got the munchies. She's running around. She's not sleeping at all. And we're calling oh like, God. listen, do we need some stronger meds? If you want this dog to be calm, but she's doing fine. So thank you to the people who have reached out okay. and about Mabel. The problem is my wife and I are losing our minds trying to keep this dog still because she's running around the house. She has so much energy. She goes to daycare three, four days a week because she has to, oh, okay. to burn off this energy. So it's really sure. good, but she didn't just get spayed. I mentioned last week because she's a great, no, I haven't. Walter's Great Pyrenees. She's a um, Great Dane. Sorry, I'll get there. I've got three kids. I don't even know their names half the time. I've, she's a Great Dane, and we had her stomach sewn inside of her body cavity because her stomachs can flip around. And unfortunately, if that happens, then they're, they're in a lot of trouble. So they're already in there. So besides getting spayed, we had her stomach sewn. So she's got really supposed to stay calm. And that's just impossible with uh, with old Maybelline, um, the craziest dog I've ever seen. That's what we call her. That's her little doggy. Name. I'm trying yeah. to think do doggy daycare. Do they have like a running track and they just let these dogs just go round and round? <laughs> yeah, they've got different rooms for like crazy dogs and older dogs and smaller dogs. And Mabel's in the crazy dog. Just just, you know, go go nuts, wow. which is great, which is what she what she needs. All right. So, so that was a, that was a good discussion on Mabel. What do you guys get a dog? I mean, what's going on? I mean, Chicago is harder. Yeah. <laughs> No dogs for the like for your family. Seven year old twins here that I'm barely dealing with. It, it yeah. you know drive me crazy. My uh, yeah, there's always something lost. This morning was like just getting them out of the door it seems like a big thing, and oh. know, I can't imagine. <laughs> well, so maybe the dog will be more peaceful than my kids. I don't know. I mean, I love my kids, but yeah, well, they have them who knows. So my son, again, we'll get to it. My son, Sebastian's in the seventh grade. I sometimes do the scorebook for his basketball team. I like to do that. I sit on that side by the team, just listen to what's going on. And I do the scorebook. And sometimes I give an extra point or two. I'm lying. I don't do that. <laughs> but anyway, yesterday after the game was done, I get up and I do finish the scorebook. I look down and there's a backpack, one backpack. And of course it says Dietrich. I go, oh, he forgot his backpack. So he's like scurrying. I knew he was panicking because he forgot his backpack. He thought it was in his locker room. I'm holding it by his coach. I said, coach, look at this. He goes, that boy forgets everything. I said, I know. Oh, he does. He's really smart. He gets good grades, but he forgets everything. So they forget it now. It's not going to change. Is all I'm getting at. Um, all right. So let's let's talk Thank about the. Yeah, I feel you know, better already. <laughs> there, there, you, there you go. There you go. So let's talk about the F word. It's the joke. You know where I'm going with this. The Fed. The Fed. Um, by the time most people listen to this, the Fed likely will have probably not done anything. Maybe they've given a clue. Um, you know, again, the market, let's talk about this. Here's what I'm getting at. So the market is saying, listen, we want some rate cuts. We expect these rate cuts. You said you one worry could be the Fed really pushes against it on mm -hmm. Wednesday during, you know, the, the statement, whatever. It's all about Q&A. We know that during mm -hmm. Q&A. So just tell me, what do you think is going to happen on Wednesday, Sonu? What, what, what's your outlook? No, I think they're not going to do anything, but they're going to, at best, they're going to say, you know, the bias is towards rate cuts now as opposed to mm -hmm. rate increases. So far over the last year and a half, 18 months, the bias has been, oh, we are more likely to increase rates than reduce them. I think that flips around. 
right? Yeah. But at the same time, and, and this is where the risk lies, right? I'll set the scene here. Going to December, every every third meeting, or they basically update what's called their you know statement of economic projection. They tell what we think, given appropriate policy. Remember, they're a big factor here too. So mm -hmm. taking that into account, what we think the economy will do over the next year, 2023, 24, 25, where, do you, where we think rate interest rates will be, how many, so which tells you, okay, how much will they cut or hike, right? So in December, they updated the projection. Well, hold on to, one second. Let me just time out. That's the dot plots, right? I mean, just. That's the dot so, plot. Yeah. yeah that's that, the so dot he, plot. He, this, this is he, the thing. So Sona gets so excited talking about this stuff. <laughs> it's called just the dot plots to every normal person who really doesn't care about it. But the dot <laughs> plot. Yes. <laughs> yeah. If you ever hear dot plot, that's what it is, right? There you the go. statement there you of go. economic projections. Mm -hmm. Now, what did they project in the dot plot? In December, they said, uh, they'll, they implicitly said, we're going to cut rates by 0.75%, three mm -hmm. cuts, 25 basis points each, 0.25% each time, right? Now, the market has raced well ahead of that. And market's saying, you know what? We think they're going to cut about five or six times, about one and a half percent or so. Mm -hmm. Now, why is that? Well, look at the inflation data, right? Over the last year, inflation, core inflation, so excluding food and energy, came in at 2.9% year over year. By the way, in December, before this data came out, the Fed thought it would... 23, 2023 core inflation would be 3.2%, and we are below that, right? So yep. keep that in mind. Now, year-over-year year inflation, it actually doesn't make sense in a way because the, what's the denominator? Denominator is from mm -hmm. December 2022. It doesn't, yeah. you know, why use that, right? So you look at the last six months, core inflation is running, Ryan, at 1.9%. <clears throat> last three months, core inflation is running at 1.5%. The wow. Fed's target is at 2%, and that is why the market's expecting a lot of cuts. Right now, forget the Fed saying, oh, we want inflation to fall. We want to see it sustainably fall towards target. We are below target now. We're below target inflation. So the only question is, what is the Fed waiting for? Maybe, you know, I, I get why they don't cut in January. Yeah. March is... I still think it's like maybe 40% chance that they cut, maybe 50%. We have mm -hmm. a couple of more inflation reports employment reports to come out so i you know yeah. anything can happen there but they've got they've got to cut right they, they can't mm -hmm. keep rates at like five and a half percent and they think normal rates right and, and that's good context to have where's your baseline normally if things are okay inflation's running on target there's no the economy is not overheating it's not underperforming either mm -hmm. they keep rates at two and a half percent we are three percentage points above that they can lower it to four and a half percent. Like I think, but that that's the risk, right? The longer they keep rates tight, the higher the probability that something breaks. Right. Yeah. Well, no, well said there. And again, we've been in the camp that you know, hey, the door is open to to cut, and maybe not March. I think I think they maybe want to see a couple more months of good inflation. Because let's be mm -hmm. very clear here: what we've heard when we've had you know people like Libby Cantrell on, and different different uh, you know, really people understand what's going on out there. Powell really didn't do himself a favor by going all over the place saying transitory, transitory, transitory. OK, so he's got some egg on his face with inflation the other way. I think he really wants to make sure it stamps out inflation. So believe me, he could cut in March. But again, I think I think May makes a little more sense to be very sure. But it does open the door for cuts. And speaking of cuts, so I want to take a couple minutes here to talk about this. Um, the idea of normalization cuts the idea of a recession uh you're cutting because of a recession or you're cutting because of a panic i looked at the uh, 10 first rate cuts so new going back to the early 80s and sure enough you know we're with this one to us is more of a normalization cut similar times 84 89 and 95 and 2019 those times right. the economy was okay the Fed maybe hiked a little too much the other side, but the economy wobbled, and then it continued to grow, kind of like 2019, 2018, 2019. Then they said, we can cut. One year after that first cut, so no, those four times, higher four out of four times, S&P up 13% on average. Here you go. Recessionary cuts, 1990, 2001, 2007. A year later, down almost 12% on average uh, right. for the S&P, and then panic cuts. That's 87 they cut after the crash. 98, long-term capital management, Russian ruble, lots of problems back then. And then 2020, 100-year pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, one year later after the panic cuts, this is wild, s and is up 17% on average. So a panic, maybe not. It's so surprising. In a panic, maybe you do want to dip your toe in. But we're going to classify this, again, as more of a normalization cut, which could be a good potential thing. One more stat for everybody if you're sitting down here. Can they really cut at all-time highs? Because we're flirting with all-time highs as we speak. Now, believe me, when they cut in March or May, maybe we're not. I'm just talking out loud here. 
So no, I found 20 times the Fed cut when the S&P was within 2% of an all-time high the day before. So it closes like sure. yesterday, the cuts today. So if it's right there, one year later, this is wild. One year later, after a hike, when you're within 2% of an all-time high. After a cut. Ha- after a cut. Sorry, after a cut. The s and is higher 20 out of 20 times, up almost 14% on average. Boom. It is what it is. The, the, don't, don't fight the Fed if they're cutting. Now, I'll be very honest. In 2007, there was a cut, and it was like 3 or 4% away. That wasn't a very good time. It's also not within 2%. Wasn't that far away from an all-time high. So there's always that caveat. Let's be clear. But when you're close to an all-time high, it tends to be pretty bullish for the stock market. So I don't know. One more for you. Let's wrap this up. Because on Twitter, I mentioned some of these things, and all I hear about is, oh, yeah, right. The Fed's cutting because the economy's weak. The Fed's cutting because the economy's That's why they're going to start cutting. You can't fool us. It's not because of inflation. Can you push back on that? Maybe it's the next discussion, actually, in the macro. But is the economy really Really, that week they're, they're just cutting because inflation's come back and they don't need it yeah, at no, five and a half percent, right? We, we, we'll, yeah, the economy is doing fine. We'll talk more about the economy, probably mm-hmm. doing more than fine, to be honest. But, yeah. but inflation's coming down. Look, what is their mandate? The mandate is full employment, right? So they want the unemployment rate low mm-hmm. and yeah. they want Check. stable, stable inflation, stable inflation, not very low inflation, but stable inflation, right? Around two mm-hmm. percent. So that's what they want. We're like I said, we're below that, right? Mm-hmm. And we've got. You know, uh, uh, the unemployment rate has been below 4% for about, what, 23 months or uh, something like yeah. that now, close yeah. to two years. So now they manage. It's, it's always a risk management, right? So what's a risk now? Inflation's coming down. Every forward-looking piece of information you can stare at tells you that, okay, inflation's not going to come back and up in a hurry. Now, 2025, 2026 may be a different thing. But for now, 2024, we know rents are coming down. All, so inflation sort of contained and it's likely to be contained, right? Barring any, you know, black swan type events or something like that. It's contained. So then where's the risk? The risk is that the labor market could break. The risk is that the unemployment rate could go up. And I think that's why they cut, right? It's all about risk management here. And cutting doesn't mean they cut all the way. Like I said, they don't cut. For, I don't think they have to cut from five and a half to two and a half percent. Right, two and a half percent being where they think normal is, they just have to cut from five and a half to four and a half, just show direction. I think that, and that first cut is going to be for telling markets, you know what, we are biased towards understanding risks in the labor market, and we want to make sure, you know, something doesn't break there. And so our bias is towards cutting, right? And here, hey, folks, here's the first cut. So I was looking for this. Claudia Som tweeted it, and boy, she tweets a lot because I'm oh, trying yeah, to find. I'm trying to find where it was. But they were talking to Janet Yellen about um, the idea of a recession, and I forget what Janet Yellen said, but it was hilarious. It was kind of like oh, I told you so. Like you should have listened to me. I told you there's no recession coming. <laughs> Wasn't just she reading your that. outlook? <laughs> yeah, that's true. That was the joke. If you back in the middle of the year, we had it. We 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 put uh, our outlook in front of. Uh, I can't find it. I I don't know. But it was it was funny what Janet Yellen said. It was a good interview with her talking about. She's got a. I'll tell you this, Janet Yellen. You know these these people you see them on TV and they act a certain way. And I mean, we all do it. I do it too on the podcast. I'm one way TV, a little bit different. Let's be honest. But Janet Yellen's pretty funny. I mean, I'll be honest, she's she's really got a good personality. I I didn't know that you know, until I read some of the things. But just the way she was talking was pretty uh pretty pretty good. So so um. Let's take a minute here. So Leap Day is coming up this year. Every four yeah. years, we get an extra day on the calendar, and we would just like to drop a little hint this year. We hope you spend it with us. Many, many more details coming, but we are planning to do a live Facts versus Feelings with some of our very best and uh, favorite guests. Um, so more details coming. Um, Save but the without date. W- Save the date. Save it once day. every it's four years. Day. Leap day. Um, yeah. And, and maybe by then I'll be using these. On the YouTube channel, I'll show them. So these are my new headphones, Sony. These are Bose, oh, I don't know, Quiet Comfort Ultras. They're nice. they're quite expensive. I put them on. They sound amazing. So I travel a lot. And, you know, when you're on a plane, it's noisy and there's whatever. So I like to just zone out. And I put these on and they just whoosh, like there's no yeah. sound. There's literally, <laughs> there's like could be a truck next to me. I wouldn't even know uh, there's a truck next to me. So I put those on. And what I've realized is these headphones I have on here, these are pretty nice too. But like I've got a head, my kids say I have a head shaped like an egg. That is what it is. Egg guy, <laughs> like it, if you have one, I'm not making fun of you because I have one too. So like these barely fit on my head. Like hats don't fit my head right. But I'll tell you. These new Bose headphones I got, they oh, are God, nice yeah. and they comfort and they're they're extra long for, for someone with a l- longer head like myself. So anyway, I'm um I'm a fan of those. Um I don't think Bose is publicly traded, so I can I can talk about them, uh, how much I like them there. True, uh, yes. with with my with my headphones <laughs> there. Um 
One other thing I wanted to touch on before we talk about the the macro backdrop and and wind things down. Um, are you excited? Taylor Swift's in the Super Bowl, Sonu. I know you, you, Sonu literally asked, "Are the 49ers <laughs> in the AFC or the NFC?" He literally yeah. asked. I'm like, "Oh my I, I goodness, got, Sonu, come so, on now." So, so, so which yeah. one are they in? NFC, Sony. NFC, Don't say that okay. out loud. Oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm embarrassing myself. But hey, I, I, that's not. I, I don't know everything. There you go. And like, yeah, that's right. No, you don't. <laughs> Taylor, you know, I, I feel like we're all just living in a Taylor Swift world. Yeah. That's it. That, that's all wow. I'll say about that. <laughs> yeah, we are. My daughter we're, absolutely loves. We're renting loves... space in it. That's all. It's her world, and we're renting. And my... My daughter loves her, and she's so excited. I know a lot of girls, little girls, and oh, well, a lot of people, a lot of people in general uh, feel similar, my daughter specifically, but I'll just say I'm tired of it. But I'll just leave it at that. I don't want to you know, say anything other than that. But it, it should be – we'll talk more about the Super Bowl and Super Bowl indicator next week. Got some stats and figures. Totally who's, pointless, who's totally performing useless. performing at but... halftime? And normally the halftime's a big deal. And, like, I guess Taylor Swift is a big deal. It'll be cool if she performs. Like, I... come out for, like, a little – you know, impromptu performance there. And I don't know if the guests would like that, though, to take the spotlight from. I'm not sure. I'm sure we could look it up. I'm not sure who's performing at the Super so here's Bowl this year. But conspiracy, yeah, a conspiracy theory. Do you think the NFL wanted her there? <laughs> of course. <laughs> of course. Of course. <laughs> that the NFL wanted the Chiefs there. I've seen that before as a Bengal fan. So, yeah, I don't, we'll just be really quiet uh, there. I'm, yep, I'm yeah, probing old yep. wounds there. Yeah, you know? I know, I know. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, all right. So let's finish things up, Sonu, as we um, wrap up episode seventy of Carson's Facts versus Feelings with Ryan and Sonu. Again, titled it "Unpacking a Mega Week." We're going to talk about uh, the economy, uh, specifically, I guess GDP that came out last week. Again, wow. that's gross domestic product. How our economy is doing? The fourth quarter. I guess I'll just summarize it was really strong once again. You want to take it away, Sonu? Can I can I do this Taylor Swift thing? Like you know, you is go. that what she does? <laughs> I, I think so. I think so. You have to That's put what, an eighty like get an eighty seven, put an eighty seven on you somewhere, then you then you can do it. Yeah. 80, yeah. 87 has a different connotation for folks of us, those of us in markets, though. So. That is true. I didn't even think of that. That's funny. Maybe we can go somewhere with that somewhere down the line. But anyway, it's funny. Yeah. But no. Look, GDP growth, and here's the thing, everyone is expecting, or economists were, not everyone, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. economists are expecting a 1.8% reading for fourth quarter GDP growth, right? Yeah. Which is not bad by itself. That's still like close to trend. Trend growth over the last decade is a two, about 2.4%. We're not far <laughs> below that, if mm -hmm. that was, you know, where it came out at. Q4 GDP growth came out at 3.3%. Now, the one way to spin that is, oh, that's a slowdown from Q3, well, the third quarter is yeah. 4.9, 3.3%. Who are you kidding, right? This is massively, massively strong. I mean, this is, and, and look, I think what confounded expectations were, you know, better than expected inventories, so, you know, uh, companies mm -hmm. stocking up inventories. But yeah. that in and of it tells you, in and of itself tells you that, you know, why do com uh, companies stock up inventories? Because they think demand is good. Right. Mm -hmm. But even if you take that up, take that, the three main highlights I saw consumption was strong and especially services consumption running above trend. Right. And by the way, goods consumption, we got the strong GDP growth number despite goods consumption being slightly weaker because of the UAW strike. Motor vehicle sales weren't as high as it could have been. If you take that out, if you exclude motor vehicle sales, GDP mm -hmm. growth would have been 4%, Brian, 4%. Massive. The last wow. decade, it was 2.4%. We are well above that, right? And then investment spending on technology, we released our outlook. We talked about AI and investment. That's a big piece of why we think productivity mm -hmm. will increase. You want to continuously see that. Investment spending on technology equipment bounced as well. So that's a good thing. And then seeing that continued tailwind from government spending, especially state and local government spending, right? What happened in 2020 and 21? State and local governments pull back. They said, you know what? We are going to this going into this massive depression because of the pandemic. We are now going to spend. And at the same time, they got money from the feds, feds right? The fiscal, you know, CARES Act, ARP, American Rescue Plan. They yep. sent money to households, send money to businesses as well. Remember PPP and all that? Oh, and yeah. then it also sent money to the states. The state, what did the states do with that money? They bought treasuries, right? They bought treasury bonds, they saved it, like a mm -hmm. lot of other people, by the way, too. And then now in 2022 and 2023, they started spending it. And yeah. so we're seeing that tailwind. And I think that's really the three big highlights for me from this GDP report, strong consumption, especially services, investment spending continues strong and motor vehicle output, right? And within investment spending, you and I have talked about manufacturing mm -hmm. construction. Right. 
So manufacturing construction, get this, it makes up just half a percent of GDP. That's like nothing, like yeah. half a percent. It's not much, barely just above that. Yeah. It Out of the three, so the economy grew about 3.1% year over year, again, much above trend. Manufacturing constru construction contributed 10% of that. Wow. 0.3%, 30 basis points of that, despite being like this tiny, tiny part of GD, of the economy. So that's how massive it is. Why was that, right? Because we had the CHIPS Act, we had the Inflation Reduction Act, the Bipartisan Infrastructure and Jobs Act. I mean, a lot of that, we wrote about this mm -hmm. back, goodness, back in one of my first blogs I wrote, like so soon after you came on board at Carson, mm -hmm. was about the Inflation Reduction Act. And it's, right. like, it's, not, it's not about inflation. It was about industrial right. policy. It was about reshoring right. manufacturing in this country. And we are seeing the fruits of that. I mean, we started writing about this, oh, goodness, about a year ago now. And, you know, it's, it's kind of nice to see that play out in the numbers, too. Oh, absolutely. I mean, again, yeah, the Inflation Reduction Act, there was there were some other parts in there that was it truly about reducing inflation or get some things through that people wanted to see, maybe. Um, but some of those things have been very positive, very, very positive on the fiscal front. I do oh, a couple comments from me on it. Um, nominal GDP in the U.S. was 5.8 percent last year. Nominal yeah. GDP cool. in China, China, 5 percent. The U.S. grew on a nominal basis more than China. I mean, what is it? Two, three decades, four decades? Never happened? Yeah, I don't know. Soda wins last time? Yeah. Never happened. I mean, so how about that one? How about that one? The other one that got me, Sona, you shared this with our partners. I thought it was fascinating. The CBO has projections in January 2020. They project where they think the economy will be this year. I believe it's a long Before way. A lot can happen. Before right. the pandemic, before the terrible wars, before the supply chains, before the most aggressive Fed we've ever seen in a generation, you get the picture. Before two vicious bear markets, honestly, last uh, all of a sudden, the economy is growing faster than they projected in January 2020 right now. I mean, literally, no one had that on their bingo card, did they? I don't think so. So, no, no, did they? No, yeah. no, exactly. Yeah. And Amazing. That, like, you know, uh, <clears throat> I'll try this analogy out, right? Because... You know, we've been talking about. By the way, time out, time out. Let me yeah, let me jump okay. in. Let me Go jump ahead. in. So he, yeah. Sony's been so excited about this. So I'm I'm drumming it up now. I'm getting it. He took a drink oh, of water. His analogy. Yeah. He's been getting ready to break this out for the first time. So if you if you falter, you know people are going to know Sonu. So no 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 pressure here. No <laughs> pressure. Let's let's hear your analogy. Let us know how Sonu um, does with his analogy. And and actually, um, it's Usher. Thank you, Chelsea, our producer. And Chelsea, can you give us the uh, the the email address? I'll make sure I say it right. Just type that in the, right. the chat box there. But Usher is for episode 70. And by the way, before so I'm getting I'm really drumming you up, Sonu. So think about how you want to do this analogy. <laughs> oh, I want to make wow. sure. Okay. You can email us at facts versus feelings versus is VS, facts versus feelings at carsongroup.com with any thoughts, questions, concerns, anything else you want to talk about. Um, we'd love to have more interaction with our listeners and to help sure. us, uh, help us out. Oops, this keeps moving on me here. Why is that moving on me? Huh. Okay. <laughs> if you can only see how I'm trying to do this, I can't see the thing. There we go. Help us out by telling us how we're doing. Uh, leave a review and use the thumb buttons and subscribe if you want to hear the latest. So that's a little way to help us out there. And it's in the chat function. As I go up, it goes right back down. So that's why I read it kind of <laughs> clunky because it wouldn't stay where it was supposed to. But please help us out if you like this podcast. It mean a lot. Um, all right, Sonu, I gave you plenty of time now. Oh, it was go. probably about the last thing we're going to talk about here. So we've got to wrap this up on how you're going to do your analogy and put, to put all this together. Take it away, Sonu. Like maybe talk about soft landings, no landings, hard landings, right? And I think the analogy is the economy is an airplane, right? Mm -hmm. But if you think about it, once you land, everyone gets off, right? <laughs> That's yep. the end of the trip. The economy doesn't stop like that. So it's almost like there's no landing for the economy. I think a better metaphor is actually, this was, uh, you know, kudos to Alex Williams, a macroeconomist and our friends at Employee America. Mm -hmm. He first brought it, talked about this like about six months ago or something, right? And this is, it, I'm a, racing fan and i know it's, uh, mm -hmm. our producer chelsea is a big uh, mm -hmm. racing fan too i definitely recommend for next week i'll show up the book uh, she wrote this amazing book uh, race like a girl for kids mm -hmm. and uh, my daughter loves it actually my son loves it too so i definitely recommend check it out chelsea balfour last uh name b-a-l-f-o-u-r race like a girl if you have little kids check it out even otherwise definitely check it out mm -hmm. so she, she may appreciate this an analogy as well. But think about a car racing, right? You're facing a ravine, a big, deep ravine. You can't stop. You're already, okay, you got across it. What do you do? How do you jump? You rev up the engine as much as you can to get to the other side. Now, the three risks here. Two risks are, one is you obviously don't make it across, 
Right. And then the other one is you yeah. hit the other side of the cliff. Yeah, I was thinking Thelma and Louise. I was thinking, uh, great yes. movie, great movie, but you know, they, you know, that didn't work so well for them. Or maybe it did. They got, they got away from the people chasing them in a, in a weird true. way. But anyway, yes. go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, the, the third risk is, look, after you successfully cross, you don't want to hit the brakes, actually, because you'll mm -hmm. flip over, right? You still want to gun the engine as soon as, as soon as the boom, the tires hit the road, keep the vehicle straight, gun the engine, keep going, right? So the economic analogy here is... Uh, the ravine is COVID. That's a pandemic. Mm -hmm. The goal was to have the economy clear that ravine. What did we need to do? We had to gun the engine. How do we do that? Fiscal spending, CARES Act, ARP, American Rescue Plan. Mm -hmm. Not just for households, as I said, right? Fiscal aid was sent to businesses and state and local governments. So that the economy makes it to the other side, doesn't crash, right? That's what we were facing in 2020 and 2021, right? And in fact, the U.S. actually gunned that engine much better than everyone else. Yeah. And 2022 came, you're sort of hanging on top of the ravine, we're close to making it over, and then everyone started panicking about inflation, right? The Fed wanted to hit the brakes, right? And But by 2023, what happened? What happened? We hit the other side. The car didn't flip over despite the brakes being hit by the Fed, and the Fed hit the brakes hard, right? Despite that, look, the axles didn't break. The shock absorbers worked. The car didn't flip. The economy took off as soon as it hit the road. Why? We had CHIPS Act, IRA, Bipartisan Infrastructure Act. You know, households had gotten effective mortgage rates at three and a half percent. So they yeah. were in good shape. Net worth was higher. You and I have talked about all of this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's where we are. Now the car has landed. We gun the engine as soon as the tires hit the road. And now it's back to normal. And, you know, that's just, we still have twists and corners and all of that. But we are at a more normal place right now. That, that's yeah. my analogy there. There you go. You've been waiting to use that for a while. That was yeah, pretty Yeah, I've been pretty, thinking pretty about awesome. it for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. It reminded me of my movie, The Bee Beekeeper, talked about last week with Jason oh, Statham. Yeah. Cars and wrecks and all types. The number one has made more money than any movie this year, The Beekeeper. So um, there you go. Keeping that <laughs> Are you seeing the going. Ferrari movie? Have you seen that yet? No, nah, I don't know that one. Ferrari. I don't know that one. The Ferrari. Uh, Adam Driver, uh, Kylo oh. Ren from uh, Star Wars. But okay. yeah, no, it's, it's, I haven't seen it yet. I'm looking forward okay. to seeing it. Uh, I haven't seen that. Now, I may check out Beekeeper yeah. first. I did see Dumb Money, speaking of... Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I what like you think that. Of that? I'm, mm -hmm. I'm going to put it up, you know, top of my list of uh, finance trading-related okay. movies. Wow, and that it's, good. It's okay. pretty good, yeah. And that's something nice about, you know, you always want the underdog to win. I know you and I are fans of Rocky. Sure. Oh, the underdog yeah. to it. And those those kids made money. Good for mm -hmm. them, right? Mm -hmm. And, and Seth, Seth Rogen is amazing. Seth Rogen's funny. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. he was playing the hedge fund manager. Like, everybody hates hedge fund oh, managers. Oh, <laughs> okay. Okay. So, it was funny. It, like, you get a laugh out of it. I yeah. Like so it's on Netflix now. And, um, yeah, so yeah, I'll definitely. I think it's in my queue as I'm I'm flying around uh, going to Texas this oh, week. Actually, this is National Meat Week, everybody. So I'm going to Texas to get some real authentic barbecue, pit style barbecue down in Texas. How nice. are you going to celebrate Meat Week, Sony? What are you going to do? It's a very important week, obviously, for those meat eaters out there. Oh, I don't know. I I feel like my you know. Uh, so I like food as you all know. I like <laughs> even if I have yes. hot even if I like hot dogs, right? I'm in Chicago. I want like a Polish. Mm. I want one of those gourmet Chicago dogs with the sport mm. pepper on it. No ketchup. Oh. And here, you know, my kids are like, no, we want Hebrew National or something like that. And those hot, those little hot dogs. And they slather yeah. ketchup all over it. That's mm. going to be me. You know, th that's probably going to be my my piece of meat for this week. I mean, I, well, you know, I said piece of meat, but yeah, you yeah. get what I mean. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll take a rain check then. You and I will celebrate Meat Week next <laughs> yeah. time I get to your fine, fine I'll city. wait for that. There we go. So so with all that, everyone, again, this was episode 70 of Carson's Facts versus Feelings with Ryan and Sonu, again, titled it Unpacking a Mega Week. And again, it was sponsored by our friends over at Y Charts. So with all that, I think, Sonu, we talked about everything we possibly wanted to talk about. We went a little long, but I think uh, hopefully a really good discussion for everybody. You know what, everyone? Stocks at all-time highs. The Fed's probably going to start cutting sooner than later. Um, the economy is still strong. Inflation's coming back. There are worries. There are concerns. But it's been a long, long ride, and we've appreciated everyone listen to this podcast for 70 episodes now we think we've done a pretty good job hopefully of giving honest opinions of what's really going on out there and um you know, we've been a little right on the a little right as well so we'll continue to give our honest opinions and hopefully this bull market keeps going let's leave it at that so with everybody with that everyone we'll see you next week on the latest um facts versus feelings episode 71 next week but enjoy your time and um i guess there's no football this weekend so enjoy a week off with no football and let's get ready for the super bowl here coming up take care everyone bye-bye
Information provided on Facts vs. Feel and Casino Varghese and Ryan Dietrich are for general information only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. The statements and opinions of show guests may not be reflective of CWM LLC or its affiliates. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All indices are unmanaged and may not be invested in directly. Investing involves risk, including possible loss of principal. No strategy assures success or protects against loss. To determine what may be appropriate for you, consult with your attorney, accountant, financial or tax advisor prior to investing. Guests on Facts versus Feelings are not affiliated with CWM LLC.